You're listening to the Medic Materials Podcast, hosted by Mike Turek, Emily Yates, and Gerard Cuomo. All our current EMS providers and educators with a combined 30 years of EMS experience. Each month we discuss EMS news, medical science, and review actual EMS calls, offering many educational opportunities to the listener. Portions of the calls have been altered to protect the privacy and identity of all involved. Hello and welcome everyone to the uh, Medic bun. Materials Podcast. Every bun? <laughs> what? Every bun? That was everyone. Yeah, I heard that. Oh, too. you heard the one. I heard every bun. I heard everyone. Are you hungry? It's not me. Don't worry. <laughs> well, that everybody, for uh, those of you new to the podcast here, that was my great friend Gerard. <laughs> I'm who, just gonna keep who's going. Clean, clean his ears out. <laughs> We're bringing Cinnabons next time. One of the other uh, Cinnabons. You're, wear, you're wearing a new hat. I am. It's just, so yeah. it's clogging your ears. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, hat. Uh, it's the hat. It's the hat. <laughs> uh, we're also here with uh, nurse and EMT Emily, as always. And uh, she, who will be taking her EMT test in three days, Kelsey. Mm-hmm. Whoop. Yay. Excited. Excited. So we're, uh, we're starting off this year with... A very interesting, thought-provoking call. Um, It's got a little bit of everything in that we're going to be talking a lot about treatments, when to and when not to treat stuff, uh, hypoxia, as well as a little bit of compassion, humanity, and DNR stuff. So uh, let's jump right in. So with this call, it is a uh, a standard EMS response system. You have uh, one transporting ALS ambulance. It's staffed by an EMT, basic, and one paramedic. It is a, uh, a residence in a rural setting. Your hospitals uh, near here, you have one generalized, you know, community hospital, uh, approximately 20, 25 minutes away, and then two larger city hospitals um, with all capabilities, stroke, trauma, um, you know, cardiac, whatever you wish, they have uh, approximately 25 to 30 minutes away. So you're dispatched uh, priority two or a Charlie level response for an 82 year old male with shortness of breath. You arrive on scene and you're met in the driveway by a family caregiver. This caregiver tells EMS that uh, the gentleman's been short of breath for the last five days with progressive worsening. His, uh, he does have oxygen at home, but he's just decided to stop using it two days, uh, two days ago. The caregiver states, uh, quote, at this point in time, it must be really bad if he told me to call. Uh, they also report that his intake has been next to minimal and that he is more or less dying. So at this point in time, before we even make entry into the residence, where is your guys mindset starting with this information from the caregiver. We're going to be dealing with a hypoxic patient who's going to be probably critical. Okay. I was going to say, it, right off the, get, the get-go, this sounds bad. Sounds bad, right? I was already thinking about calling the second medic. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, you enter the home, and you meet your patient lying, lying supine in bed with his knees bent. Okay. He's alone, and he appears super agitated and very restless. He's, he's literally squirming all around the bed. So without even going up to your patient, does this presentation concern you? And if it does, why does it concern you? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Normal people don't do that. Normal people don't do that. People but, in pain do that. Okay. So or people hypoxic pain, people or, do yeah. that. So, so we're thinking right off the rip, hypoxia, right? This is not a presentation for a normal mentating human being, right? When people have that loss of oxygen, their brain does really funky shit, right? They get restless. They get agitated. They squirm around beds, right, if that's where they're laying. At this point, what do you guys immediately want to know? What do you want to do? Well, from the ALS side, I'm a, before I do anything, I want a history of the patient. I need to know what the heck I'm dealing with here. Okay. Because, I mean, why is he on the homo too? Why did he stop? Why taking? did he stop? That's what yeah. I was wondering. Okay, cool. Can't get it yet. Okay. Well, uh, the, your way. the family has disappeared and the caregiver has also disappeared to another place in the home. So you are left with patient, your partner, and yourself. Begin your assessment, manage the airway. Okay. You walk over to the side of the bed 
And uh, at bedside, you find that he's got a GCS of 15. He's conscious, alert, and ordered. Um, his airway is open. It's clear. It's free of debris. His breathing is shallow, but yet tachypnic. His respiratory rate it's, is, is estimated above 35 breaths per minute. Radio pulses are present. They're equal. They're very strong and yet very fast. Uh, this paramedic takes lung sounds. They're clear bilaterally in all fields. Uh, skin is warm, dry, extremely pale. So where do you want to go from here? It's an interesting presentation for initial in that he's squirming all around the bed. You would, you would, would assume, anticipate him to be altered. You right. would assume yeah. that he would be altered, right? But he can answer this is who I am. This is where he was. Right. Blah, 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 blah. That, that is odd. That's an odd yeah, presentation. I, where do you go from here? What, what would you guys like to do? I would like to get as many questions out to him before yeah, he before loses his lose mental him. status. Yeah. Okay. So what do you want to know? DNR, DNI. Okay. Allergies that he's on. History. history. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> okay. Start with what's going to kill him first and then kind of go back from there. Okay. So he, uh, he says no allergies. Um, he uh, also says no meds. No meds. No meds. And, and for an 82-year-old. Um, I don't believe that. But he's on oxygen. Correct. But again, to him, he, he hasn't had it in two days, right? You don't find... his medications? What was that? Did he discontinue did, yeah, did his he medications? Yeah, did he do that himself? At this point in time, this provider doesn't know. Okay. Um... Not a question that they asked this this gentleman I've had at that point in time. Where, you know, what kind of medications do you take? None. Right. I'm like, I, I was just in the other room, and there's the basket of plenty. <laughs> no, I stopped taking them a week ago. I'm done. Right. Huh? Yep. Um, and really, he does not. Uh, he does not give you anything more than he's he's sick. Right. He's been sick for a while. He says, I. You know. I'm done with this. I'm sick. It's fine. Uh, that's pretty much the response for history that you get from him. But you can assume that, you know, he's, he's, I would think that he is declining at that point in time because he's not, he, yes, he's conscious alert nor when you start asking, Hey, who are you? What's going on? He says, I'm sick. I can't breathe. This has been going on, blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't really give you any in-depth information. You ask what kind of sick are we talking about? He All he says is that he can't breathe. Breathing's been getting worse. Does that come out in one sentence? It does. It does. Um, anything else that you guys want to get? Let's go ahead and start getting vitals on him. Why awesome. did he stop taking put oxygen? Well, that, yeah, I'd like to know a lot that. of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a whole lot of word pop. I just want to at least find out where we're at physically. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, would, I, I, I like I like a baseline yeah. set of vitals, right? Baseline set of vitals are as follows: heart rate via the pulse ox is 150. Uh, SpO2 shows up less than 50 percent. Mm. Uh, on this particular monitor, it just gives you the less than sign yeah. and 50. So it could be 20. Who knows? Um, did you just put up a little sign that says you're screwed? Yeah, seriously, right? right? <laughs> uh, respiratory a rate. a sad face and a screw <laughs> next to it. <laughs> we should just build our own monitor. Like, you know, the the Bluetooth <laughs> electrodes right, so there's yeah, no fucking those, wires right, and oh, screwed faces. Real. Like, right. it, it'd be perfect. It'd be absolutely perfect. We'd make billions. I know. <laughs> And, you know, half the people that we know that probably don't understand what less than 50 means, they definitely understand. You're, you're screwed. screwed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Adenosine, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. I love it. Uh, respiratory rate is, uh, is counted as 36. It's distressed. It's shallow. Uh, blood pressure via the uh, non-invasive automatic blood pressure cuff is 91 over 72. At this point in time, he is anxious. He's restless. Um, he's still able to answer the majority of your questions uh, that you say, ask. The, map, the map's still good. I mean, his, yeah, his yeah, blood pressure is actually fine. Okay, yep. Yeah. And uh, and nasal end title is placed, and it is a it registers as four. I was However. 
However, uh, this paramedic, when I was speaking with them, uh, said that the uh, nasal end tidal waveform was literally non-existent mm-hmm. on the monitor. So either it was a really bad tracing or it was really that bad. So take that as you will. Um, these providers decide it's time to place them on the cardiac monitor. They put a four lead EKG. It shows sinus tack and the, uh, the EMT decides to do the good BLS thing and puts them on a non rebreather mask at 12 liters per minute. Uh, the SPO2 then increases to 72%. Are you guys okay with the NRB mask? The yeah. non-rebreather, or I do you want like, something else here? Yeah, with the respiration. I feel like I would have 30s. done that earlier, though, because I don't need the pulse ox to tell me that this patient's hypoxic. We are, we saw that at the door. Mm-hmm. So I think I would have jumped on that. If you're going to go with the non-rebreather, put it on them now until you can get everything set up, but they really need to be bagged. bagged. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Especially when you said respiratory rate in the 30s. But I also want to find out from this patient if they want to be intubated mm-hmm. prior to him losing his... Mental status. Yeah. Like, if this is his choice, then let it be yeah, his choice now. Better, yeah. yeah. So, it, it, again, when speaking to this medic, at this point in time, the medic decides <clears throat> internally he's going to RSI this patient. Yeah. Right? There's, there's no if ands, buts about it. He needs to manage an airway, take over the ventilatory status, and, and yeah, just from RSI heard, this patient. Just from what I heard from the family on the way out, that's why I said I'm, I'm already thinking call that the on-call medic. And right. We're, we're probably going to go down that road. Yep. So in this system, RSI is a two ALS provider skill. So, it, you know, again, he would have to call for said second paramedic, right? Uh, adding time to the whole process. So it was... it. At this point in time is where, re- like, reviewing this call, it seems this is the change to more difficult, right? It was somewhat difficult before. Now it seems to get a lot more difficult. Uh, the paramedic, like a good paramedic, uh, should, informs his patient saying, hey, this is my plan of treatment, right? Are you okay with this? He right. goes down the, are you okay with intubation, right? Tube down your throat, help you breathe, blah, blah, blah. The patient refuses, says fuck no don't want that really paramedic goes um now what? Probably, not, <laughs> probably not the best ah, shit <laughs> thing but yes ah shit right <laughs> ah fuck <laughs> um refuses the intubation and again he's still conscious alert oriented at this time can make that decision on his own uh however the paramedic asks if there's any advanced directives he goes, no, there's there's nothing on paper. So he's a full code. So at this point in time, he's a full code, right? At that point in time, another family member walks into the room, arrives on scene, walks into the room, announces themselves as the healthcare proxy to the patient. Now, in this system, technically, EMS providers don't necessarily have to listen to healthcare proxies, but... The EMS crew decides, hey, let's hear what they have to say, right? The paramedic asks, listen, this is the route of route of treatment that I want to go down. I want to intubate. I want to RSI this patient, you know, for this reason, the the breathing instability, mm-hmm. the the declining mental status, the hypoxia, well, right? Here, here's the here's okay, so now you have the healthcare proxy. What's the underlying condition? What's going on with this guy? What, why well, is that, he in bed taking his oxygen off two days ago and not eating? So we can, we can get that now, okay? So before before I give you that information, the healthcare proxy says it may not be written, but this gentleman's wishes is no CPR, no de- like no intubation, no major life saving things no no pacing no you know no nothing so i have a question you had a question so i'd be disappointed if you didn't (laughs) does this i know you interviewed does this medic explain that intubating this patient is not the end all be all like put on the vent pull the plug because like if you went up to my grandfather who's around the same age you went hey this is what's going on i'm thinking about intubating he'd be like no yeah but how because that's my grand people just don't exactly understand that just because you get intubated doesn't mean you're dying on the vent. Right. But you don't know that for this patient. Like no, they're you hypoxic don't, you less could've... than 50. They're already on oxygen. They've been hypoxic for God knows how long because they took their oxygen off two days ago. 
But they're you can in only you can only assume they've been hypoxic for, for a two while. Days. Right, exactly. So you don't know that. You don't know, but you also don't know. Not every time you get intubated doesn't mean you die in the vent. No, that's true. It's very true. This one could very well could, could be he gets intubated and dies on the vent. Right. Yeah. But I mean, I don't I don't know what. Or I mean, even still, not to cut you off, Gerard, yeah. you could intubate him and he dies during the intubation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like who's you to know? say that he's even going to handle that? Right. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how this medic put it, but I mean, I, I know me personally, if I'm going to explain to somebody, hey, this is what we need to do. I don't say, hey, here's what I'm thinking about. I'm kind of like leaning towards sticking a tube in your throat. <laughs> you know, I, I, I say, hey, we're going to have to do this, 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 and this because I believe this is the best way we're going to save your life. Mm-hmm. You know? But he's already it, made it very clear that he does not he want CPR. Want he does not want intubation. He doesn't want pacing, you know, any life-saving measures. That's his choice. Well, I know, but I mean, that's what this proxy has stated. That's what he stated. But, but he confirmed. It, it's also confirmed confirm it that the patient, patient the patient, yep, I'm it's done. it's in I'm here. Good. So I'm good with it. Uh, do, 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 do. We don't have to I, like I it. We don't have no, to I agree with I it, but like it's it, his but choice. I'll and I it. will always agree with the, the fact that you get to make that choice. Yeah, and I will probably, and I, I mean, I would definitely, I wouldn't give up. I would keep no, trying educate to, them, but hey, I think it all what I think depends on how it's explained to the patient. Right. And so at the end of the day, if I'm getting it directly from the patient, I'm good with it. So what I got from this was the the paramedic does inform the patient, listen, this is a life-saving technique and skill that needs to happen for your condition. Right. Um, and the patient literally sat there and was like, no. Absolutely no tubes, not. No nothing. No CPR. And he's fully oriented, and he, answers all the questions. I mean, I yep. know he's 82, but at that point, if you've already thought about that and have that decision made, I feel like this is not a new issue for you. Right, so did we ever find out why he's in bed? So um, with the proxy now there, you are able to uh, obtain some further information. Uh, the uh, The patient does have uh, prostate and bladder cancer, okay. very frequent UTIs, uh, and uh, did have uh, COVID-19 approximately four to five months prior, but was able to recover. Um, the... Medications. That's not possible. What? <laughs> uh, the medications were stopped five months prior to today. Why? He just didn't feel like taking them anymore. Medications so for the cancer. Um, what was that? Medications for the cancer. For the cancer. So. Um, yeah, he's done. He gave up. So as it was as it was explained to me, uh, it seemed that this uh, this person was given you know, X amount of, you know, months to live. They were coming up on that, you know, that month to live. And he had just said, I'm throwing in the towel. Here you go. Stop med. Stop doing everything. I'm going and, out my own way. And right. Going out his own way. And then decided to live longer than the the doctors had said. So now he's kind of on that borrowed time yeah. kind of thing. And I mean, as it was related to me through the paramedic, it kind of seemed like this guy knew where he was going at this point. Like he knew the process was ending now. And this like is to me, it seems like, you know, to me looking in on this, you know, from the start, as you guys said, critical patient right from the get go. Right. Is he going to make it to an ER? We don't know. He may, he may not, right? He might not make it out of that room. We don't know at this point in time. Does he even want to go? Tolerating the bag? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) We (laughs) have started bagging this poor guy. Have we bagged him or is he just... Yeah, we started. Well, we wanted to. Did they? So you guys have started bagging. They did not. These people (laughs) have not started to bag him. Um, So we don't know. (laughs) So we don't know. So another set of vitals is able to be taken. Uh, the BP doesn't come up with anything. It gives you that nice dot, dot, dot. Uh, he is still sinus tack on the monitor at 156. Respiratory rate is still 36. His SpO2 does not change from 72%. And his GCS moves from 15. Wait, he's at 72 now? Wasn't he below 50? They put the non-rebreather they put on. The right. non-rebreather so the 72. On came to 72. Uh, the GCS does decrease slightly. But it's enough mental status change uh, from a 15 alert and oriented to now a 14 and confused. He is now severely anxious. He starts trying to rip 
the oxygen mask off of his face. So this is where the humanity end of it comes in for me because <clears throat> once I get it from him that these are his wishes, I talk to the family, I know what his underlying condition is now. We know, we have the picture that he he's, this is the way I want to go Ready? out. I want to go out on my terms. I but don't not wanna, suffering. This is where, the, this, this, is, is, this yeah. is what pisses me off because now there's nothing I can do. Why? To, 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 to stop him from suffering. Why? Unless, I mean, I can't, I can't do anything. Why? What, I can give morphine? Why not? What am I treating? I mean. Death. Call a doc. You're treating death. You're making it so that he's not suffering. This poor yeah. guy is restless. He's hypoxic. He's uncomfortable has because he, he won't but, stop. I mean, has he said he doesn't want anything done? So. Because that's my understanding is he wants nothing done. And I'm like. But does he understand? Like, I, I think you that you need to something. educate on that. That's something you have to yeah. say. At this point, he's he's confused. And at this point, So I right. think we almost missed the mark on that. Okay. But, like, do you have the conversation with the healthcare proxy? I realize pre-hospitally we don't really pay too much attention to healthcare proxies. Um, but, we can but honor, there's we pay nothing, attention, there's, but... There's nothing that says, like, typically, yes, we don't listen to healthcare proxies, at least in this state that we all practice in. I don't know if it's different for this you know, system. But if, if they are in the same lane as the patient was 10 seconds prior, I agree. I feel like that's hey, a great resource healthcare for us proxy. Yeah. I can listen to you at this point in time. Yeah, I agree. And I guess, I mean, just something I was just thinking about. I mean, <clears throat> this is this, now we're in this weird position. When's the last time outside of a hospital, any of you have, let somebody die. Basically, not just, you know, watch someone die because that was their wish, but, you know, not actually in, intervened to help it along in a more peaceful way. Mm -hmm. I've never done it. Doesn't mean you can't. I agree. I've always been I trying would... to prevent that from happening but if they flat out say i am ready right. to die here right. in my and home I've, I've had plenty where you know dnr dni whatever or even just where you know the wife is there and says i know my husband this is what he wanted and and then we, we just so don't do if they efforts. had a dnr dni in writing would mm -hmm. that have changed your mind on the morphine well i guess it would no because well i mean I, I don't know if i'd have to defend myself later but if anything on there says anything about comfort care measures, to me, that's comfort care. I would do it. So he had said that there was just no life-saving measures, right? Correct. Call okay. a doc. Yeah. I would call a doc and get morphine. Yeah, I yeah. feel like I would. Make this more comfortable for him. Make it somebody else's decision. Well, like I said, I mean, this isn't, this isn't one of those oh, I know. everyday, hey, we're going to help you go on to the next chapter. Right, you know? and, these, and these type of calls really don't happen... Frequently, like yeah. this is not something that people see Especially on a regular like, basis. If you've had this and you stopped treatment five months ago, like was hospice contacted? Because that takes the, that takes yeah. it kind of out of our hands, and then hospice can handle it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was reported to me that hospice was contacted, and this patient refused hospice. Really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. Yep. So he's just totally. I'm flying solo. I'm flying solo. At least that's uh, that's what yeah. it seems, right? So as we continue, all great points to start thinking about as this uh, as this call gets a lot more interesting. Okay. So being that he's so restless uh, at this point in time, his mental status begins to decline. He starts trying to remove all of the oxygen that EMS is trying to keep on his face. Um, with that, his SATs decrease to 64, and his respiratory rate decreases from, like, the 36 range to around the 28 range. EMS decides, all right, you know, at this point in time, the oxygen mask, let's throw it away. He's not doing anything. Right. Maybe we can put the BBM on, Try and bag him. It'll be less of a fight if we just take over the ventilations, right? Because right? people don't want to work very hard, right? So they begin to they they switch to the BVM. 
And he Blood again... Going to tank now, right? now they switch to the BDM. Now, really, this is eight minutes from being on scene. Granted, still a long time. Not really a lot of time, though. Right? It's it's a lot of time, but it's not a lot of time right. for all of this to be happening well, at you once. Know, I fully understand what seven minutes is like when you're uh, under And that's pressure. it. And yeah. that's it, you know? Um, and, and that was one of the big things interviewing this provider they were sitting there like time management on this call was atrocious. Like my time management was atrocious. So at this point in time, we can clearly see things are going downhill, right? In a respiratory call, the downhillness, I'm quoting a word there, making up a new word. The downhillness of a respiratory call tends to happen quickly. You and I have seen yeah. it. We've all seen it where they're like, yeah, they're really good. And then it's like, boom, they're dead. Right. Um, so at this point in time, EMS has a conversation with the healthcare proxy yeah. about leaving the room. That's what I was going to ask. Do they want this person transported to the hospital? Because now they're bagging him or they're attempting. He's still trying to, like, you know, yeah. rip it off, but they're at least attempting at this point in time. And the healthcare proxy says, you can bag them, you can take them. EMS goes, they, he might not make it there. Like, right. it is a very good possibility that he does not make it to the hospital alive. Are you sure? Legality healthcare question. proxy says yes. So you're sure he'd rather die in the ambulance or again, even, die, or at even die at a hospital than die, yeah. die at home? And again... The, at this point in time, the, the EMS providers are kind of leaning on what the proxy feels is in the best interest of that family member, right? Because they know him, you don't. They Right. Like, I agree with that. You know, the, the EMS provider, this is the first time these people have ever met. Uh, well, you know? Even though the, we actually got it from the patient. Hey, I don't want nothing done. To leave, leave me alone. But he was the one that wanted EMS called. Right. He was the one that he looked called. at the yeah. family yeah. member to he say, called. Remember, he was the one oh, that right. stated, I want EMS called from the family caregiver that then wow. disappeared into a different room. That's how they knew it was bad is because he said to it's call. It's interesting right, to me, yeah. though, like, did he want to call because he was uncomfortable? Like, the initial presentation tells me that he was. Mm -hmm. He's restless. He's anxious. He's hypoxic. Yeah. Right. So does he want to go to the hospital because he thinks they're going to make it more comfortable for him? I don't know. Yeah. Nobody will know, but... Right. Which... Leans to my point of I would have asked him more first. Mm -hmm. All great things Before to went all great home. things to think about. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, and, and that's it. You know, <laughs> so It'd be nice if we actually had a, some kind of a not maybe not even standing order, but just a little entry in our protocols that says, "Give us a call at medical control if you have you know <laughs> a DNR DNI patient or a patient who doesn't have a DNR DNI and says, hey, I want to freaking just die in peace,' but you know." The dying process isn't very peaceful, so mm -hmm. please give me something, something. But anytime no. you have a quest, I mean, I feel I like we a, have that. I just don't think that that people are going to call as quickly, I guess, as I would hope. Because, you know, anytime you have a question on anything, you call a doc. Yeah. So why not that? That's true. I, uh, but, so but, I but again, it lends itself to experience. How much experience this, yeah. do people have right. in EMS with... You know, comfort measures, giving morphine for a dying patient. For somebody who's still talking to you. Right. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm in Gerard's camp of off. I want to try and do what I can because I was called here to fix something. It might be comfort Help care. die. Or it could be I think try and fix the respiratory problem. And I think that's it. it, it it's, it's, it's a hard... Like, and I feel like, like our like mindset of... I'm sorry. I mean, here. like our mindset of, of fixing something is... Fixing it to make them live. Well, and, and we have yeah. to start maybe in something like this. Start, and we don't get any training in and it. And you nope. go we into this. Your brain to you go into this and you say fixing, like, whoa, yeah. this airway, you know, this breathing right. problem is right in your face. And this is like, yes, this right. is my bread and butter. I know how to handle this. But then the patient says, no, I don't want anything done. And you're like, well, fuck. Right. Now what? So mm -hmm. in this situation, us fixing something actually is us. Making it more making comfortable. Uncomfortable to pass. Right. So if he flat out said nothing, now five minutes from now, now he's completely being bagged because he's that unresponsive. Healthcare proxy says do everything. What do you do legally? Everything. 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 Even because, if the patient prior again, stated nothing. nothing. You know, oh, I thought you said he didn't state it. There's no, nothing. if the patient prior stated he wanted nothing, 
and now you're he's you're bagging him in the healthcare proxy oh. standing in front of you saying do everything even so though five minutes to... ago they said do nothing you and it, i think it comes do you in do that now? same lane different lane kind of thing there's nothing in writing right yeah you take the patient's you know wishes and you say okay they didn't want any extreme, you know, extreme measures taken to save life. The healthcare proxy was on board with that. Yep. But now they're switching tune. Is that because they're they're now realizing that they might lose a family member right. and now they're in that, oh my God, I need to save them kind of thing because I don't want them to be gone? Right. Or how did that how did that change? Right. It would be, it'd probably be for me an, an, another conversation with the proxy. Like, so uh, again, real, you know, mm. educate them on what the heck is going on yeah. in that moment. Um, Especially with this chronic issue, you can do everything. You can intubate them. You can do CPR. You can get ROS back on them. That doesn't mean they're going to have a good outcome. Right. So I think it's really important to educate on the, the very real possibilities that mm -hmm. are about to happen. Yeah. Or, right. or, or, hey, you know, we do everything. We save their life. We bring them back. They end up coming back from the hospital to die from freaking bladder cancer. Right. Right. Exactly. Which like is not you, what you know that. Anyway, right. You know? This. You know. <laughs> yeah. They were given a terminal amount of time. Right. Exactly. Right. Like this is going to be the outcome, right. whether he dies today or in a week or in a month. And it sounds like he whatever. accepted that. Like when they right. said, "You have this much to live if you don't take your pills," and he said, "Fine, I'm not taking my pills." Yep. And he accepted that in this amount of time. That's it. I'm done. That's it. Yep. And like we said, he's at at this point in time, the healthcare proxy already said he's on borrowed time. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. He's already so surpassed he's already this surpassed. Time. He could be okay with it, right? right. Uh, again, it's hard for the EMS crew, looking in from the outside perspective, to know because it's the first time they're meeting anybody. And on I think this it's scene. hard because you don't know, like, I mean, go about trying to save people's lives, quote, or like you really want a lot. I mean, I'm 18. I really would not like to die tomorrow. But I think when you get to that point where you've just accepted it, you're at a totally different mindset than any of us can even understand. Well, it's like when I would literally sign my DNR right now if my doctor would give it to me. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Like, yeah, absolutely. Well, well I mean, it, it, it's funny because I actually worked with someone who you know, um, who has a DNR DNI. Yep. And I remember when she, you know, the first time she told me, we're you know we're in, in the ambulance together, and she's like, yeah, you know, I do have a DNR DNI, and you know, if anything happens, because at the, the day she was having some issues and uh like you know i want you to, you got to respect that and i told her flat out like fuck that i ain't gonna respect that <laughs> i said i'm gonna do whatever i can do to keep you here you don't have the sheet right yeah. <laughs> and but, dude but, but that was that was knowing, me as a knowing brand, her that, she would come back as a oh, ghost and oh, she would you every day just twist my nuts every chance she could <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but now that was as uh, like literally i was like a maybe six month emt brand new just new to ems new to all this stuff Never really, you know, understood the whole accepting death, accepting death process, mm -hmm. and um, you know, looking back now, yeah, I would respect what she mm -hmm. she wanted. I wouldn't, but not I even respecting death. I wouldn't like, let her suffer like that. You take it one further, because how many times do you go on scene and you know somebody wants to RMA, they're having chest pain, like they could be having a STEMI for all I know. Right. They're having a STEMI and they're like, no, I'm not going to the hospital. Like, I respect that it's your decision to make. Your body. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that I don't have to agree with it. All mm -hmm. I have to do is educate you. Like, and I'm going to educate you to the very best of my ability. But I will absolutely 100% respect that it's your decision to make. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. I didn't hear a word of that. <laughs> I didn't hear a word of that either. Would you like me to eat the microphone more? Yes. Now I can hear <laughs> All right, so moving <laughs> on. <laughs> so with that tangent, um, EMS talks to the proxy. We've established the proxy still wants them to go to the hospital. So at this point in time. What is the patient doing right now? Still fighting the bag, still? They're, they are... Again, restless, still trying to fight the bag. Orienting. They're getting they're they're getting breaths in. However, it's not like it should be. Right. Nothing like it should be. Um so the crew sits him upright, where then uh he decides it's my time to dry heave. He's given nice. a he's given a can. No emesis occurs. Instead, 
he confu- in a confused, distressed manner, he throws himself back onto the bed. SPO2 at this point drops from 64, being bagged, to 39. Just like, I, I'm, I'm just having a hard time watching this right now. Right. No, I mean, this is like, I mean, you're watching someone in the throes of death and doing nothing to make them be even more comfortable, you know? So, at sinus attack at 155, now bradycardic at 38. Yeah. We're, we're, we're reaching the point. Reaching yeah, the I point. I mean, watching him die and make him comfortable. I. So. He's not going to make it out of the house. Not going to make it out of the house. And even when. Maybe sedation. Maybe even on morphine, just some sedation. Anything. Anything to make him comfortable. To, I mean, at this yeah. point in time, there's not even a second blood pressure. I'm sure the blood pressure at this point, assuming, is right. probably. In the toilet. In the toilet. Yeah. You give him morphine, you give him Versed, and you're just, you're just going to watch a rhythm change at that point in time. Yeah. Right? So is that. Is that then assisting in death yeah, or see, is it making comfortable? Like at 90, you can still make him comfortable. If you're, if you give him, you know, Versed or morphine or something to make him comfortable, you're just going to kill him at this point. I almost think you missed the ball on that because I think at this point it's assisted. I do. I think it's assisting. At mm-hmm. this point, but, not so much comfort. But let's be honest, death. So once we get to that point where, you know, the brain is, is so hypoxic that, you know, your consciousness is not, you are not there. Mm-hmm. And it is just basic body functions fighting to stay alive. That's got to be pretty freaking painful. And whatever's going on in the, the brain that we'll never know. And that's I, it. I, I mean, we don't know. I, I'm, I'm just going to assume that it's probably terrifying. Mm-hmm. So, to me, that's still a comfort But he's measure. restless and anxious the second you walk in. Right. Why, like, to me, I think I would do that sooner. I think that's where we don't until have that Until he has or that barely any pulse, no blood pressure, and he's right. hypoxic at 30%. Right. The mo- now I you're mean, helping him die. Now, well, now he's the literally moments we, away that you'll give the morphine. It won't even take effect before he dies. Right. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, the best thing we could have done is, had we known or had some kind of direction or training or something... Where, hey, when he says, hey, I don't want nothing, this is it, he's still with us, able to say these things, that we should be able to just say, okay, we're going to respect that, and I'm done talking. We're going to, what would you like me to do? You want me to make you comfortable? Right, and that, and you I know? think that was the missed opportunity, right? Yeah. Start a line, call a doc, be like, hey, I'm going to sit with this patient for comfort measures, do whatever. But would you, you or I you know? have even thought of doing that right off the rip? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. It's not something yeah, that's see, ingrained. But I mean, you no. see this person and they're restless and they're anxious and they obviously look uncomfortable. Yeah. And you don't think it would cross your minds to make them comfortable? So I, I think, think we're still in life saving mode. But I, you already know that he doesn't want anything. He wants done. nothing. Right, because he made that clear pretty mm-hmm. pretty early. The patient did. Yeah. Healthcare I mean, proxy came in and confirmed. The it. Proxy but confirm again, it? he made it clear, you know. Extreme life saving CPR, intubation, you know, uh, cardiac pacing, stuff like that. Not so much oxygenation. I wanted, I, okay, right. but even and if I you're going right to here. bag yeah. them or give, why can't you give morphine to make that easier? And the, and the, and the, I think, I think where it's lost is there's there's we talk about experience so much in this in this podcast that there's no experience to fall back on like hey i've done this before i've seen it before okay i'm going to this is clearly what they drill into you in paramedic class this is really bad patient try and fix really bad patient there's not that that line that you're like, oh, uh, fix well, them to make them worse. Fix them right. Make them comfortable to go right. To right. Yeah. There, right. There's which I, I I know you as a I didn't mean to cut you off, but I guess you as a nurse, and I know just from what I've saw with uh, uh, a family member of mine that you know passed in the ICU. The, I mean, you guys, uh, you're, I don't want to say like you're used to it, but I mean, those, we're more exposed those, those to those it. Nurses, yeah. Yeah, yeah, those nurses, they knew what to do. They knew. Okay, you know, they, when they extubated her, you know, she was still breathing on her own. Everything was, and that's what, and, and that's right. what she did. She came in and 
I said, I'm right. here to make her a little more comfortable. And I'm like, well, why? She looks pretty fucking comfortable with me because she ain't fucking moving, you know? <laughs> and right. then they gave her a little bit more and then a little bit more. And then, and just, you know, about every 20 minutes or so, they'd come in and give her a little, little bit more until she finally passed. Which I guess pre hospitally like, thinking that like, then, yeah. But I do now. I think thinking about it pre hospitally like the only time that you really ever experience that is if you by chance go to a hospice patient. And like right. that's few and far between because mm-hmm. hospice, you know, they don't really need us. They take care of themselves. But a lot of times you'll go and it'll be like, oh, I couldn't get a hold of hospice, so I called you. And like, there's nothing we're going to do from there. Mm-hmm. There's not like that's so I get that you don't know it because you're not exposed to it. And, and I, right. I think that exposure and experience lends a lot because we as paramedics and EMTs are not trained to deal with helping process. death. Yeah. Right. We're, we're letting we are, them die, essentially. Right. We are there. Oh, OK, we get called for a code and we arrive and they hand you a piece of paper and you put them on the monitor and they're still VTAC pulseless. And you're like, OK, well. I have my piece of paper. I have my piece of paper. Let I, me watch this until I it's can just, not. <laughs> right. I can just watch this until it's not. Not, here's a guy who's clearly on the way out. He's in the dying process. We get called to shorten your breath. Hey, you're here. Fix dying process. Now don't. But, then, but no, I don't oh, want I, you to. I, I don't really want you to, but here, still try and fix it. Because the 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 family, the healthcare proxy, is still saying at this point in time, bring him to the hospital. Bring him to hospital. Paramedic is saying he won't make it out right. of this room. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you but should yet, be, bring him to morgue is more fitting. You know, <laughs> you and, know? and that's it. Like, there, speaking with the the provider, there was no chance this this provider ever had an inkling of. This guy makes it out of bedroom. Right. Right. No, no way. Yet family's sitting there I going think we've devolved into speaking Neanderthal. But maybe you explain to the we family like <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you explain to the I family and say, like, hey, I don't think he's gonna make it to the hospital. Why don't we make him comfortable here? Mm-hmm. See, and that, like and maybe you like give I them another have, option. I but again, had that understanding or knowledge to right. fall on to. So, and, right. Uh, I have a big you know, question. That, that this is one of the situations I should do something like that. Mm-hmm. Who is this family member to this person? Uh, because, it's the son. Exactly. You're, if my dad is dying in front of me, I'm going to want you to do everything possible, even though no matter what he's flat out told they're me. Having a, they're having a struggle of their own. They're having yeah. their own struggle watching yep. their father die in front of them. 100%. But that's why if I could make your father more comfortable. Yeah. That's going to make it that like much that. better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I just learned something new. Yep. But I'm welcome. That think- son is sitting there saying, <laughs> yeah. do everything possible. Bring him to the hospital where miracles happen and they're, they're going to bring him back. Don't do anything, but take him to the hospital. Yeah. Right. Is ultimately what he's saying, which the patient, I don't disagree. You know, if the family wants him to take him to the hospital, that's on them. Like, that's their decision. Maybe, you know, it's a family house. You know, there's there's a million reasons why they don't want them in the house. But at this point, we're past that. Yep. Yeah. Can because we all agree this is put a body in it? Not is. to not to make it any less, uh, you know, important. But can we all agree that this is rock and hard place oh, yeah. kind of thing? Oh yeah. Right. This is this is the this epitome is of rock and hard place. place. Yeah. Right. You're you're damned if you, you know, call a doc and make them comfortable and do whatever because you're not thinking those terms, because we're not trained to think in those right. terms. But you're also damned because you know if you move him, he's going to code. Right? He already dropped, you know, significantly just sitting him upright. Now you want to try and move him somewhere else. But what's the harm in calling a doc who sees people die way more frequently than we do? Because these you don't think of that. In the moment. Yeah. Right. You don't well, think and, of that. You right. see this severe respiratory distraction, and you're like, oh, I can fix that. Absolutely. I know what to do for this. Right. And then all of a sudden, like now this the patient in the healthcare practice are like, no, and you're like, uh um, oh. okay. So you don't think like, okay, let me go that, total yeah. 180 mm-hmm. and let me give you something to help you make it more comfortable for you to pass. Right. It's just it's a different thought process. It's a very different thought. And um, one that no, no, EMS is not it, very it, exposed it, it, to. I mean, yeah, when you get down to breast, it is assisted. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, that's literally what we're doing. Is we you're are treating, assisting them. You're treating pain. Yeah, I mean, you're making more comfortable. Yeah, you're treat. It's what pain management's I'm, for. I, I and and I and I like looking at it that way because when they say, "Oh, it's assisted suicide," no, 
They're already I dying mean, with or right, without they're you. Gonna, right. I mean, it, it, assisting death, not suicide. Yeah. I mean, to, if I may quote, you know, Archie Bunker, would it make you feel any better if they were thrown out of a window? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's going to happen. But can I be that instrument so that it happens peacefully for them? Mm-hmm. So I mean, not, not only for them, but for the family watching too. I can't imagine and watching pain. my yeah. father anxious, Suffer. restless, right. right, and being the one who has to hold the cards to make the day what happens. Yeah. Right. I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, seeing my grandmother writhing around while her basic body functions are trying to, you know, do something, cling to right. life. Right. It was much better that they kept hitting her with morphine and mm-hmm. she was nice and still and nice and peaceful. And the only way we knew she passed was, you know, just everything just kind of slowed and then stopped. Yep. I think how peaceful is that, though? She was never like 150, super right. anxious, and then all of a sudden just right. dropped. Like right. you're it was just, just a normal a nice, baseline, and right. then just kind of braided down, and mm-hmm. and then she just, and then it just stopped. I think mm-hmm. a lot depends on the provider too, because I mean, it depends on how many family members have you had passed that were adamant that I am not even, I'm not going to the hospital, I'm dying here. How many hospice patients have you ever had? I think a lot of it, your morals too. I feel okay calling a doctor and being like, listen, can I have morphine? I think it all comes down to the provider and what they personally feel, which shouldn't be involved. But in a case like that, it is. Yeah, I mean, our, mm-hmm. our, what is our what is our motto? Do no harm. Mm-hmm. Above all, you know. But is that doing harm or is it no, helping? In, in this in this situation, in I this think it's case, not doing harm. It's helping. It's helping. helping. Yeah. yeah. So now do we want to know where this goes? Yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. Cool. <laughs> He jumps out of bed, break dances across the living room. He <laughs> runs down the stairs, right. jumps in the ambulance. Yells, wee wee, pee pee, and runs down the street, right? Or you have a weekend at Bernie's moment. Right. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, where did I leave this off? Okay, so he, um, <clears throat> at this point in time, uh, with the with the decline I'm sorry. in, I just totally <laughs> thought about that. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> poor you. This is Michael Jackson's. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> So the devil right now, he's just going, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> he will be mad. <laughs> All right. Um, so bagging continues, right? With the decline in mental status, he's a lot more, uh, you know, okay with the bagging. Um, however, you uh, then see eyes into head, body shakes three distinct times. Agonal respirations. Uh, pulses are checked. Both radial pulses have been lost, which were uh, there prior. Carotid pulses are still present and still very strong. So the EMT decides NPA airway and continues rescue breathing. Five minutes goes by. Reassesses. Blood pressure of 136 over 70. Wow. No. Where did that come from? What? That came, that, that, that came from the people at what? Phillips. <laughs> so, uh, blood Angel. pressure. Blood pressure, 136 <laughs> over 70. Heart rate is sinus tack at 132. Seriously? On the, on the EKG monitor. SpO2 is 81%. Entitled CO2. Did he look it up to himself? (laughs) (laughs) You were looking like, just kidding. (laughs) Psych. Jokes on you, bitch. (laughs) Entitled CO2 is 18. And the respiratory rate is assisted with the BVM at 12 to 14. GCS of three. That's when you look at the freaking sky and you go, give me a fucking break. Man. <laughs> I, not even give me a break. Give him a break. <laughs> give him a break. Right? Take him. So EMS providers have another heart to heart with the proxy. And the, the proxy still says no CPR, no pacing, no life-saving measures. 
They still want him to go. For what, though? At this point in time, the medic medic then gets very uh, forward, saying, dude, cardiac arrest is imminent here. I can't do anything for it from what you're telling me. And there is nothing that I'm going to do here. He's not going, like, right now, he's he's, he's breathing because we're breathing for For him. him. Right. He's not breathing if we don't breathe for him like this improvement is because he's a GCS of three. And the fact that he's not fighting, he's not fighting his his hypoxia is now getting somewhat fixed because we're bagging him. However, if we stop this. He's just going to decline again and eventually he's going to be in cardiac arrest. So we really can't move at this point in time. So after that conversation, the medic sees these changes. Heart rate on the monitor drops from 132 to 108. ETCO2 drops from 18 to 17. And the changes continue. Heart rate drops again from 108 to 52 with frequent PVCs. End title drops from 17 to 12. And it continues to trend downwards until you see ventricular tachycardia yeah, the, on the monitor with an end title of eight. Grasp. Yeah. Pulses are checked. None are present. Medics looks at the looks at the proxy and goes, the heart is stopped. This is the time where CPR should be done. Again, we're confirming none. Healthcare proxy says none. Cool. VTAC turns into VFib, which then eventually turns into a systole and... He dies at home. So, medic calls Doc at that point in time. Is the EMT still bagging, though? At that point in time? No. (laughs) When did he stop? (laughs) Yeah, he's just over there squeezing away. (laughs) At at that point in time, no. (laughs) Um, It's not working. (laughs) Um, So, the medic does call medical control. Asks for secure orders, gives them the whole ring them around, you know, convoluted mm-hmm. story. The doc gives the secure order and everything is left as is, right? Um, I Could the think, doc understand? I mean, like, uh, the, the, he was cool with it? So I don't know exactly what the doc said. Um, I can assume that okay. giving the order, yeah. this was okay with it. Was right. okay with it. Well, no, I mean, you know, like, 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 he didn't get yelled at for it. Those right. Things where they ended up, you know, reluctantly being okay with it. Yeah. Versus no, it, just like understanding. All right, cool. I don't think that job. there would be anything to be reluctant about. Yeah. The patient made his wishes clear. The healthcare proxy, yeah. which they do follow religiously in a hospital, made the wishes clear. Mm-hmm. The only thing the medic didn't do was drag him out to the ambulance to die there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, which kudos to them. So there, there is a, I think we've unpacked a lot happening in this call. Um, and I, there is so much in here in that we wanted to talk about the compassion aspect, the humanity aspect. I think that's where this really hits home because at the end of the day, it's taking care of your patients in their, in their final 10, 15 minutes. All of this occurred within a 15 minute, 20 minute period. So it was, again, the provider told me they felt like they were there for three hours and it was like 22 minutes or something, something crazy like that. And they're like, time management was awful, but yet it really, it really wasn't. There was a lot to digest here, a lot of crazy changes, you know. That was like like me, seven minutes. I'm like, no, no, we were there for like an hour. It had to be. Right. And and you don't you don't realize how fast time goes in in crazy situations like this. So one of the coolest things that I thought came out of this was the provider after getting off the phone with the doc came in, said, Hey, all clear. You know, we're we're done here. Uh, but then went and didn't return in service for another like 30 minutes. Didn't even clear the scene for another 30 minutes. 
just speaking with the family on the other side of the of the house, telling them, listen, this is what happened. This is what we did. This is, you That's know, yeah. and, and most, most EMS providers, we all know would be like, Please. I am gone. See you later. Goodbye. I wouldn't right? say most, I would say most of the assholes. So uh, most of the providers. Okay, right. so <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and, but it's true. How many mm-hmm. providers do we know that would have been like, oh, sorry for your loss. He's, well, I left him on the bed. The cops so, will be here so, soon. Here, you have your as, insurance card? as soon as the cops are here, we're going to bolt. Thanks and we'll wait time. outside until they get here. Right. Yeah. You know, but this provider sat there, let the EMT clean up everything. And yeah, please don't leave a mess. Just sat there with the family, explaining the that. family. And, you know, it's like, why wouldn't you do that? That's what we should be doing. Because in people's yeah. mind, they don't have time for that. Which is disgusting. But, which it's is awful. awful. And it's I, awful. And I would even go a step further and say, and some people, there's something ookie bookie about it, and they just want to get the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. There is something wanna, ookie bookie come, about it. Yeah, they don't want to be dealing with people's emotions. sorrow and mo- emotions and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. But those people's world just stopped. Right. Mm-hmm. So our care, so your, our care should not stop. Our, no. our, our, our it refocuses. Our just, be, just went from being the person that died to the family. family, family. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So I can't even imagine that if like they were like, yeah, spouses. this mess is yours. Right? I'm just gonna leave, and you can deal with it all. Elderly spouses. I mean, literally, oh. they become my my priority fucking oh. patient right off the fifty rip. plus I will years sit there of marriage and cry with them every time. It's and my biggest worry is. They're going, they're going next. right in front of me because they're getting so worked Akusuba. up. And yeah, that, I know yeah. I get it. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, you know, they've been married 50 years. It's they don't know known, life without you know, each other. The right? wife was yeah. this doting wife, you know, all the time he was sick. And yeah. and it's like, you know, I will pour them drinks. I will cook them food. Mm-hmm. I will do whatever I have to do to make sure that they're comfortable before yeah. I leave. And especially if they're alone. Like, if yeah. they oh, yeah. don't have family. Like, I'll sit there and I'll wait. Hey. Where's your closest family member? Right. Are they coming here? Yeah, they're going to be here in 40 minutes. Okay. okay. We'll wait. I'll be here, I'll be here I'll in the next 40, 40 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Like, tell them not to rush. They're coming from it's Anchorage. Okay. okay, well. Uh, yeah, I'll no, clear sorry. it with my soup. <laughs> 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 What's for dinner? <laughs> um, what can I make you for dinner? <laughs> you know, and, and that's, that really is the, the compassion. We already spoke about the compassion yeah. in the death process. I think it would have been really cool if there's some form of like end of life training that, that you know, they give, yeah. you know, to EMTs and paramedics. Cause then you're thinking, Oh yeah. Cause again, the, the provider in speaking with them, writing this up, really gave an insight to the thought processes going through their mind through the whole thing. And again, it was at bedside RSI or death. And yet RSI might kill you because you're close to death, but there was never any thought process of like, Oh, Hey, there there's close death here. Maybe I'll just sit here and start a line and give them some nasal oxygen and, Give them some morphine and make them comfortable. Make it, yeah, make them comfortable. You yeah. know, there there was none of that. So, I don't know. Maybe that's something EMS should look into in oh, the future. Is. You know, yeah. I definitely think because nurses get it. They they see a whole lot more of it. Again, difference between the you know the licensing and the certification. I can go on and on about that <laughs> all day. Different um, episode. <laughs> That's gonna get heated. If I only had a union. <laughs> um, anything that you guys want to bring up in this that we haven't touched on? As somebody brand spanking new. I don't. I feel like so when my uncle had passed away a couple months ago, it was in our district that we work in. So the providers knew my family. My uncle is a firefighter. He was an EMT for a really long time. So they stayed. They stayed until I showed up and they sat down and they explained from A to Z exactly what had happened because that's what I needed. They sat there with my aunt. What do you need? My aunt was married to my uncle for 52 years. It was, we went there every single day waiting for something to happen because that's all she knew was how to take care of my uncle. 
but he his heart was at like 60% heart function two months prior when he was in the hospital and he was adamant I am going to die here don't even call he used to tell my aunt of course she called because it's my aunt but I feel like going and knowing how my from the family side of things felt it would have been a lot better just him and he died at home peacefully before the whole COVID thing and he never would have been able to leave the house the way my aunt is but that's the way he wanted to go it's something too like the family wanted him transported they were very adamant like take him to the hospital Mm -hmm. which is an interesting point but then you think about it like can they live in that house knowing that their father died there and then it right maybe that's so like i almost understand them saying like take him to the hospital especially if the patient didn't care one way or another which he he wasn't adamant about staying he was just adamant that there's no life-saving measures. Right. So I kind of understand one way or another. I mean, I just encourage you to listen to what these people are telling you. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. take your own opinion out of it and listen to the family or the patient, if you can, and get that information before they lose their mental status. Or instead of taking yourself out of it, put yourself in it. If this was your father, your so-and-so, and this is what they wanted, wouldn't you want what they what wanted? What they want, exactly. You don't have to agree with it. You just... You have, you have to accept to, it. Exactly. And again, you're there for the betterment of them. them. Not you. It's not It's not you. Take yourself right. out of it. You can play your mind all you want internally. You're getting but, a paycheck at the end of the week, and you're going home that night. Right. They're, they're Everything just, just stopped. Yeah, they're, they're something right. just began. You're right. Exactly. So, you know, you are there to be whatever they need you to be at that point in time. Right. You know, if... Uh, if they really wanted this guy transported, okay, but make it known that that's probably not the best thing for him. Right. Educate them. You know, yeah. and, and do and that education. And there was, is time for that. There's always time for that. I think it was really great of this crew to sit there and be like, he is not going to make it out of the house. Does that change your mind? Mm-hmm. Anything yeah. else? I think we pretty much covered that's it. I mean, that's, I mean, it, it. This one was tough. This it's one was really one, tough. This, yeah, because I mean, it's like you know, it's it's like, you know, could care have gone differently? Could you know, decisions have been made quicker? Could you know, outcomes have been changed? I don't think outcomes would have changed no matter yeah, I don't what. Think decisions could have been made quicker um, either. Twenty-two minutes. You know, I know all that to go that's, on. That's I mean, we just talked about it for an hour. We still don't have a decision right. made. Right, and <laughs> yeah, like, and, and yeah. these are those. They did fine. These yeah. are those really. Okay terrible calls that you're like i hope i never get this like listening to it i'm like i don't, know. I don't yeah, I would not call. want to be that guy you know like yeah who? i would not i don't even want to be uh, the ent trying to bag this guy I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> now, so. now having heard this call i mean uh, honestly me in the future changes your practice yeah, absolutely because uh, now think? i know if, if i'm faced with something similar or even in the, in the same ballpark that question in my head is now going to probably make it to my mouth and go hey you know Comfort measures. Yeah. Because not everybody you thinks know, of that. No, Not everybody has later. that experience. Where like, my uncle wants to pass away at home. What can we do to make yeah. him comfortable? And yeah. you're always trained, like, no, you have to stop this process from happening. Right. Death is inevitable, but I'm going to push it off as long as I fucking can. Right. And we're going to race the Reaper. Yeah. All yeah. That good well, no, shit. exactly, yeah. though. Everything we do is putting off the inevitable. Right. Yep. And here. But sometimes it doesn't matter. It's going to happen. Just, right. right. And let's just make it comfortable. Yep. Definitely. All right, guys. Well, uh, happy January 1st. We will see you in two weeks. And uh, hopefully 2021 starts a little better here. Um, it has to. It has to. <laughs> you know. um, I, I'm actually going to switch up the uh, the status quo of uh, call review and discussion for this month. And I'm going to hit you guys with another call review. Mm. In two Ooh. weeks, so it goes regular twisted tea. Uh, and a oh, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I watched that video for the first time yesterday because yeah. you know how many twisted trees I drink. Yes, yeah, so. oh, trees, my god, <laughs> that many. I, I was like, that, <laughs> twisted trees, that's twisted how many trees. he drinks. <laughs> I was so happy. I was so happy for that dude. And watching the extended, have you seen the extended version of that one? No. I just, oh, dude, dude, I just got the dude you okay. have to watch the extended. He takes him after slamming him with the with the twisted yeah. tea can and it explodes all over his face. The dude drops. He grabs him, hurls him down onto the other side of the store, pounds his face in about 12 times, picks him up, throws him down again, and is like, you don't call me that, blah, blah, blah. Oh, dude. Oh, it was fucking hilarious. Wow. I was like, all 
Like the guy deserved it. One hundred percent, he deserved it. Is it better than the one that ran up and just backhanded the dude and knocked him out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta watch. You gotta watch the extended. And I'll I'll send you one. The one that licks his hand and backs, <laughs> knocks the fucker right out. <laughs> I'll send you the extended one right. with with the, whoever put this on YouTube did like graphics in it, so they have like uh. Let's put like the old Batman sound effects. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you know, uh, I can't think of the movie, but uh, the movie with um, um, you know not, that movie with that character. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> by Felicia with that. Oh, the, um, Friday. Friday. Yeah. That movie. Remember when? Um, what, no, when he's like, "You just got knocked, knocked the, the fuck, fuck out. out." Yeah, that's in there. Oh, nice. So like, you know, yeah. he whacks him, and then he's like, "You just got knocked the fuck out." Oh, it's fucking hilarious. It's great. Nice. Well, everybody have a happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, this wonderfully, you know, like heart wrenching, freaking passionate you know, story. Passionate story to get knocked, knocked out. the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, be safe. Yeah. Donuts. <laughs> Donuts. <laughs> Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you'd like more information on the podcast or to send us a call to review, visit medicmaterials.com forward slash podcast. To learn more information, like us on Facebook at Medic Materials EDU or watch our weekly instructional videos on the Medic Materials YouTube channel.